Welcome to Low Country Spotlight. I'm your host, Margie Pizarro. As always, we are so happy and excited that you choose to tune in to see some of the wonderful things that we have going on in Low Country. Of course, today's show is no exception. We have a jam-packed show, and we can't wait to jump in and get started. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce you all to our first guest. Her name is Chris Weatherhead, and she is an actor, director, uh, producer. She's done some fabulous things throughout her 45 years in the ent entertainment industry, some of which includes uh, soap opera appearances, The Edge of Night, for those of you who watched that. Uh, she's also made appearances in primetime, such as Dallas, and she's here today to talk to us about a wonderful film that she and her husband are working on. But let's start by welcoming Chris to Low Country Spotlight. Well, what a blessing to be here. <laughs> this is great. This is a blessing for us to have you. Well, we love South Carolina. I yeah. mean, after all these years in New York and L.A., yeah. I love yeah. South Carolina. Now, before we get into John Lawrence War, let's uh -huh. talk a little bit about your background. How did you get here? And tell us about some of all the wonderful things you've been doing. Well, I was in New York for maybe three or four years before I realized the emptiness of a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so I, be, I was becoming a Christian while I was a soap opera star yeah. on the edge of night. And yeah. That was, uh, that was a very interesting adventure, and it continues to be. Yeah, But yeah. I would say I started teaching acting while I was still in New York. Okay. I was doing off-Broadway. I did an off-Broadway show for over two years, eight shows a week. That's enough to kill you. Oh, wow. But the problem with a lot of the stuff in New York and in L.A. was the writing. Mm -hmm. for me. I had been a writer from the time I was, you know, 13, 14, and... I thought, this is terrible writing, and they're spending millions of dollars on really horrible stuff. So you're talking about the actual script, some yeah. of which you were acting in. You yeah. took issue with some of that. Yeah, half the time, my agent would say, ah, you have to do this. This is incredible. And I would go home, and I'd turn like four or five pages, and I'd be throwing it across the room. Yeah. You know? So anyway, I started screenwriting, uh, and I had a co-writer with me in L.A. by mm -hmm. the time I was in L.A. So New York was 14 years. Okay. L.A. was another 10 years. Yeah. Then, while I was in L.A. those 10 years, I was married to Clarence Felder, the most amazing, the most wonderful actor wow. who I had done Shakespeare with in, in New York. Mm -hmm. And so we went to L.A., and uh, he was starring with John Ritter and Hooperman and doing lots of films and whatnot. And I started doing prison rehab stuff. I was a celebrity endorser first, and then okay. I started writing and producing. And I was, I would go and shoot something like a miniseries, and then I would drive up to one of the prisons. And it was a great way to balance wow. the, yeah, I'm the sure. horrors of Los Angeles oh, and yeah. Hollywood. Oh, yeah. But anyway, suddenly uh, my mother-in-law was ill in South Carolina, so we just picked up and we came back to help with the family and yeah. we started Actors Theatre of South Carolina. Okay. And we started doing the things that we really wanted to do. Wow. We're both writers. We started producing and directing things that we really felt were valuable. Yeah. Which leads me to the first Revolutionary War film that okay. I did was All for Liberty. That's in a worldwide distribution now with Bridgestone Multimedia Group. Yeah. But while I was researching that, I discovered this amazing young man named John Lawrence. Okay. So the film is called John Lawrence War. Wow. He was only 27 when he was ambushed by the British at the end of the war. Mm -hmm. But he was a young white kid from Charleston. He was fighting slavery 90 years before it ended in America. Oh, wow. Nobody knows who he is. We hope that they will soon. Yeah. But this is a quote from him. Okay. Okay. Before we show a clip from the film, I want you to know he used to write letters from Europe where he was being educated and they wanted to keep him out of the war, but he wanted to be in the war, oh, yeah. and he had a very specific reason to okay. be in it. He said, we have sunk the Africans and their descendants below the standard of humanity mm -hmm. and almost rendered them incapable of the blessing which equal heaven bestowed upon us all. We Americans cannot contend with good grace for liberty until we have enfranchised freed right. till we have freed our slaves. Wow. Talk and, about a man before his time. Oh, he, this young man, had he not been killed, yeah. we believe, and I'm not alone, there's scholars that agree, he would have been a, a president of the United wow. States. Wow. We also believe, and this is a big one, 
we believe we would not have needed a civil war. Yeah. Because yeah. His, his arguments were so eloquent, and yeah. he was convincing many people. He was making a lot of headway. Yeah. Well, you certainly have whet my appetite for more about John <laughs> Lawrence's war, and I think we have a clip. So why don't we go ahead and roll the clip? The clip. That would be great. Yeah. I promise you, Philip, I will never stop my prayers, my energy, and my efforts to cleanse us of this deadly bondage. We are all trapped in its chains. Yes, I'm suffering for one true thing. If we all choose, we are free in our minds, John. The British will be coming down this side of the river. First platoon, take defensive positions along the bank. Second platoon, take defensive positions along the tree line. They are here! On me, lad! Lead me to that spot, that sacred shoal, where souls are free and men oppress no more. That certainly was awesome. You. And you know, one of the things that you said was the fact that you and your husband are now able to bring forth stories that you want to. You aren't mm -hmm. still tied to the Agents scripts. Agents and that... managers. Exactly. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about that because I know that there is a Christian theme that runs throughout this. Let's talk about that and the importance of you having the mm -hmm. autonomy to bring forth the stories that are important to you. Well, as every, well, a lot of people know that whoever has the gold rules. Yeah. So, if you are willing to put your time and money and treasure, and of course we're a nonprofit, so we raised a lot of money yeah. to be able to do this film, yeah. uh, you then have artistic control. Yeah. And almost nobody in Hollywood has artistic control. And right. it is a great feeling. And there are indeed many Christian themes mm -hmm. throughout the film. I mean, yeah. the people that were fighting for our freedom yeah. were people who believed as it says in our documents, yeah. that God created everyone equal. Now, it took us a while. We, we made some big mistakes after the American Revolution. Yeah. And I believe if John had been alive, I don't think we would have made that, wow. that many mistakes. So um, we want people to know about this young man yeah. who is buried nearby at mm -hmm. Mepkin Abbey. Wow. And we, want, uh, we feel that all Americans should know about the many people that fought for freedom of all stripes yeah. that are not known yet. That's awesome. Chris, thank you so much for sharing us this story. We, I feel like we've had a premiere or like a sneak <laughs> peek. So thank you so much for coming and sharing this well, with us. Well, thank you for what you do because it's very important. We need for more people to know about all these different yeah. folks that are doing great things. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, listen, guys, don't go anywhere. We First off, we will have all of Chris's information on our website and more information about the film. Uh, don't go anywhere. We've got more Low Country Spotlight coming right up. <laughs> Thank you.